Hey kids, welcome to uh, Unit 1, Lesson 12, Decomposition and Design, Exercise Number 1. We have once again came to one of these lessons where you get to choose the difficulty you would like to do. And no matter which one you choose, the important part of this lesson is something called method decomposition. And this is a process of breaking a problem down into smaller parts and writing smaller methods for each part. It's just taking a big idea and breaking it down into its smaller parts. For this lesson, I'm going to do B because I like dash lines, and that sounds like a lot of fun. Let's read what we have to do. You've been asked to paint dash lines between lanes of traffic. We are going to decompose the problem. Decompose the problem to write algorithms for moving forward as long as there's no obstacles, and painting lines that are two spaces long with an empty space in between from one end to the other end as long as there's no obstacles, and then any other algorithms that we might need to solve the problem. We have some getting started here. They want us to import some code. In Painter Plus, we're gonna translate our pseudocode from the decomposition handout to write the move fast method and our pseudocode is right here. And then we are going to translate our pseudocode from the decomposition handout for the paint dash method and that pseudocode is right here. A note here, if you wrote algorithms for any other method, translate those to Java code as well. And then we're going to instantiate a painter plus object called my painter. And then we're going to use our new methods to solve the problem. And this looks like what we're supposed to do right here. It just looks like the sprite comes over, picks up the paint, comes to the edge, turns, does a dash, paints twice, space, paints twice, space, paints twice. Well, that doesn't sound too hard at all. First, let's go ahead and import the code just to make sure we have the correct code. We're going to copy all this code, control C, come back here, and we are going to make a new file, and this is going to be called Painter Plus. We're gonna create that, highlight and paste. And we're going to commit this code. And this is going to be unit one, lesson 12. That's number one. Let's take care of number two. Let's look at this pseudo code. And the move fast method here, we worked out should say, while we can move, we're going to move. And if we're on a paint bucket, we want to take all the paint. That doesn't sound too hard at all. In fact, we had a method like this earlier that we actually wrote. Where am I going to go for this one? I'm going to go after my print status method from the last lesson. And the first thing I need to do is write my constructor, right? Public void. And then the name of our method is going to be move fast. We're going to do our parentheses and then we do our curly braces. That takes care of setting it up. Next, we have to actually populate it with that pseudocode we talked about. And we're going to use our while statement. And if we can move, need another set of curly braces, we are going to move. And then just by chance, if we is on bucket, then we are going to take that paint 
from that bucket. So we're going to take all paint. We're going to tab this over like that. Clean up a little of our code here. And this little block of code should move my sprite all the way over here. And when we talk a lot about decomposition, this is at least how my brain works. I break it into smaller parts and work through it. So for me, one, I want to test this method here. So let's go back to my neighborhood. And the first thing we need to do is instantiate a new Painter Plus object. And how do we do that? Well, we just do Painter Plus, and it's going to be my Painter Plus is going to be a new Painter Plus. And what we want to do right now is just call that method we just made. We're going to call my Painter Plus move fast. This should, when I hit run, create a painter, move my painter to the bucket, pick up the bucket, and then move right into this taxi cab. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. Ooh, looks like we have a spelling error. Classic roads. This should work. And our painter made it all the way over to the edge. Next thing I want to do is get it in the right direction. So we got to paint a dash line down here. Before I go any further, let's just do my painter plus and use our turn right method that we did earlier. And that will get me down here. Let's look at our pseudocode for the paint dash. So for this one, if we can move, we're gonna move and then paint. Looking at this pseudocode and looking at where our sprite is, we really wanna start painting exactly where we're at. So for my pseudocode, I think I'm going to start with a paint. And then I'm gonna say, if you can move forward, I want you to move and then paint again. And then I want my sprite to move one more time. And that'll take me to my dash. Now to move to the dash to the next painting, I need to move one more time. So I'm gonna do another, if I can move, I'm going to move. That should, at least in my head, give us a dash line along. First thing we need to do, we need to go over our Painter Plus. We're going to go under our Move Fast. And the first thing I need to do is I just need to write my signature. Public Void. And this one's going to be called Paint Dashes. Don't forget your parentheses and curly braces. Now in here, we also learned before that when we're painting, we can also pass an argument along, a string color. I think I'm gonna be a little fancy here, kids. And inside here, I'm gonna give the option to pass a color along under this method if I want. So back over here, let's start writing that method. Looking at my pseudocode again, I think I'm going to do a paint and then the color that we want to pass along. Then I'm going to do my while statement. And I'm going to say, just like the code above, if I can move, We're going to move and then we are going to paint again whatever color that we passed along. And that should give me my two paints for a dash. 
we're going to do this again. If I can move, I am going to move again. And then I am going to paint one more time. That should give me my dash. Now we're going to go outside of this if statement here, and we want to be in the larger while statement. And we want to say, if we can move, we are going to move. And that is going to give us our dash. So what we have written here is we're going to paint a color. Then while we can move, if we can move, we're going to move and then paint a color. And if we can move again, we're going to move. Hmm. I think I have one too many colors in here, kids. I think I am going to take this one out. And now I think this second if statement is largely redundant now. Hmm. Let's go ahead and test this code and see if it works. We're going to go back to my neighborhood. And now we're going to call my painter plus, And we're going to call that method paint dashes. Let's see if we get some dashes painted. Hmm, I did forget to pass along my color here. We should put white. Let's go ahead and hit run and see what happens. Hmm, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted to. Having that paint outside meant that it only painted once. So really I need to bring this paint statement inside this while loop so it continues to do it for the entire program. I think I can rewrite that to make it work. Let's first get rid of this paint color here. So I know this code right now says, while I can move, I can paint. So this right here should actually give me one paint. And if I come down here and say, if I can move and move again, I bet I can put paint in the color again. And that should give me a dash now. If we want something in between the dash, we need a space of nothing. And we're going to do it just like I had that written before. We're just going to do a move like that. Let's clean up this code a little. And you know how I like to put end here just to keep it straight. Now, kids, I should get a move and then paint to a move, then paint to, a move, paint to, all the way down. I think this is going to correct it. Let's go ahead and hit run and see. And that looks like the dash line that I needed. So you can see how having that paint outside my statement really affected what happened there. And because I broke the problem down into smaller parts, it was easier for me to identify what the error was and fix it. Key takeaways. Key takeaways, kids, really is this idea of decomposition. 
taking these large ideas and breaking them into smaller and smaller concepts. It's really how I attack a lot of problems, and I think you'll find it really helpful if you start practicing the same. I think if you find that you start practicing this concept of decomposition, you will find coding becoming easier and easier for you. Hopefully this video helped you understand this idea. As always, if you have any questions, kids, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.